Ask the Mayor on KWBE, our regular Thursday morning feature on AM 1450. Mayor Stan Worth with us. But we have kind of a special program today because, obviously, Mayor, we went through an election here mm-hmm. and there's some turnover of spots on the city, yours included. That's exactly right. We do have you in for a couple more times uh, mm-hmm. coming up here, but we have in today City Councilman Joe Billsbach and City Councilman uh, Rick Claybaugh. They will be going off the body, and uh, first, maybe just start out with uh, their service to the council mayor, your reaction to that. I think that uh, both Joe and Rick have been good uh, individuals to be on the city council. Uh, they are, are, are uh, well thought out, mm-hmm. um, minded individuals who look at the, the, the issues, what is best for the community, and I think that in the long run is what uh, you like to see in any council member or a mayor. It's not any one particular item, but you look at uh, the vision of the community, you look at the growth of the community, how to better the community, and I think both of these policymakers have done a really good job of uh, deciding what is actually best for the community, not always agreeing with everything that we uh, talked about, but by the by the end of the day, we still think we did what was best for the community. Mm-hmm. I was going to short t- uh, short change Joe today. I was thinking it was one term he's been on, but Joe, <laughs> it's been two terms. Uh, yeah. And uh, Dave and I were talking about the big question of the day. We were wondering, is he going to show up on two wheel transportation today, or is he going to show up on four wheel? I, I hope yeah. it's four wheel yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah. If, if people know Joe, big bicycle enthusiast, uh, the gravel grinder race. Yeah. You've formulated, and, uh, you know, I, it always kind of amazed me. You would show up at some meetings uh, riding the bike, and it might be 25, 30 degrees, I'm thinking. Yeah. That I, takes something. <laughs> <laughs> I had a streak going uh, just until about a week ago where I rode my bicycle every day for 1,037 days, and I, I actually forgot one morning to, wow. to ride, and so I kind of broke that streak. But, kinda yeah, like- I've always right to the city council kind of like so. the consecutive sellouts yeah like we don't want to <laughs> yeah. band or whatever but joe look back on when you first became a council member into now but uh, what's maybe the most uh, uh thing you didn't expect that you now know about serving on the city council i think there's i mean there's really is a lot of work uh, involved um with being on the city council you, you have to have an open mind you have to work together with with other people and you can't can't go just off of what the public says. I mean, they, mm-hmm. lots of times people have their own opinions. You see it out on social media, um, but they don't have all the facts. Uh, I, I love to listen to everybody's opinion and, and form my own opinion. Um, I think we've done a really, really good job over the years, too, working together and mm-hmm. getting stuff accomplished. So. To what degree does, do you think, um, social media kind of exacerbate that thing about, you know, <laughs> having all the facts and being able to comment on whatever you want to comment, but maybe not really telling the full story. And and then you get that input and you have to sort it all out and decisions you make. Well, it's very easy for someone to sit behind a keyboard and a monitor and and spout out about something um, when they don't really know all the facts. Rick, uh, two terms plus two years completing on the council. We should say congratulations. He was a top vote getter for the airport. Yeah, I know. Board, yeah. Which no longer yeah. exists. Yeah, which no longer exists. <laughs> no. Maybe that's why he is the top vote getter. <laughs> Rick, same question. Back when you became a council member, appointed first and then elected twice, uh, pretty much what you expected or quite different today than it was back then? Well, I volunteered um, when Eric Tiemann uh, moved out of city limits mm-hmm. and I really didn't have an agenda at all I, mm-hmm. I just thought I might enjoy being on the city council and uh, as it turned out I absolutely loved it uh, as time went on uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it and it was really a privilege and an honor to to um, serve Ward 2 um, but like Joe said it, it's um, the, the thing the thing that was really uh, different that I expected things to take a long time mm-hmm. uh, to get done, and there were several <clears throat> things that took, yeah. you know, like like one in instance. One instance was uh, I had been in a meeting um, and with about five different uh, 
uh, fiber providers that had already laid fiber in town and everything and I was I thought it would be a great opportunity for everybody to get together and and see if we could get fiber to the home well we we worked through this Stan we've had several companies that we thought we were going to mm -hmm. land and and for one reason or another it didn't and so that was one of the things I really wanted to comp accomplish before I got off the council and then here in the last month we have somebody that contacted us. Yeah. They just kind of they kind of fell into our lap, and so um, uh, hopefully uh, every every uh, uh, house in Beatrice will mm -hmm. will if they want will be able to have fiber to the home, which I think will be awesome for the city, and and uh, will will really catch us up to where we need to be with connectivity. Yeah, you know, I was thinking one uh, physical project comes to <coughs> mind that. I know it predates both of you, but took a long time. You look at the new fire station and how much that took in terms of discussion, looking at plans, you know, where do you move? Is there land available? How much do you need? Now, all of a sudden, look what you have today. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And that was something that actually went pretty quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, that, was, that was one that went really pretty quickly, and, and, but that had been talked about for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, boy, once, uh, once the mayor got that started, it... It started moving, and what a beautiful building! Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it's just gorgeous. I have people that drive through Beatrice uh, and to say, "Wow, that's that's beautiful. It looks nice." We had somebody from the governor's pheasant hunt said that uh, as we drove by, it says, "What in the heck is that?" <laughs> 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 and I said, "That's public safety." Yep. Yes. And houses both city and rural departments, and I guess you know the big thing out of it is more than anything else. Obviously, the building's nice, but it does kind of show a commitment to public safety which actually is one of what probably the most important things you guys do that's uh, the first and foremost yeah. uh, i wanted to ask both joe and rick about um how much over the years did you get constituent contact either on a regular basis middle of the night phone call here <laughs> phone call there walk up to you and say why aren't you doing this uh, joe is is there much of that as a council member because sometimes we hear from council members yeah. that they have daily conversations <laughs> with people and others say no i don't really hear a lot from yeah, people I, what? yeah i get a lot of people that stop in to the store and and talk to me and i mean not a lot but probably you know two three times a month mm -hmm. or somebody will call me but it isn't yeah. it isn't a weekly deal like some people have i guess um, but I do talk when I'm out to a lot of people about, you know, they, I, they know I'm a sounding board and they voice their opinion. And I take it back to, to the mayor or to the Tobias and mm -hmm. get the answers. And so. So when they do contact you over the years, what's the thing they most frequently talk about? Is there one thing it tends to return to or is it just all over the map? No, mm -hmm. it's surprising. I get used to get a lot of calls just on little things and. And, you know, my wire's hanging down in my backyard or something. <laughs> and it's like, have you called the city yet? You should probably should call and check with them because I, I can't come out there and do it myself. So, yeah. so I usually relay the messages, you know, onto who needs to know. and So So it's less on the discussions about tax issues or a department yeah. and more on the little things? or It or? is. Uh, I, I've had a couple certain individuals over the years that always call me every time we do something and I don't want my taxes to raise. I don't want, you know, so they're always mm -hmm. worried about that. So, mm -hmm. Rick, how about you? Same thing. Well, I, I think I got that call on the wire in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Several times. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's a little bit of a, a fallacy where, where people um, don't call as much as what others think they do. Yeah. I, I, over the 10 years, I bet I didn't have, I don't know, 15, 20 calls in really? in 10 years. There just wasn't there just wasn't that that much, and it it usually it was a major thing to them, but um, uh, it it wasn't you know about the taxes or anything like that. It was mm -hmm. uh, um, some of the things like the you know like the lights out or something like mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. it wasn't it weren't uh, real substance calls that we we basically got but when you're out in the public you will have people that will uh ask you about things and so mm -hmm. um that's when you have the most interaction i think with uh, 
constituents then. So you just didn't give them the mayor's uh, phone number and have them call him? <laughs> no, I never, I never did that. Thanks, when, when I would get, I would, I would follow the protocol that um, I would email or, or uh, just call uh, the city administrator directly and, and, yeah. uh, and have them and, and just say, hey, let me know the outcome. Yeah. Mayor, over the years, how many calls did you get on average basis? Very few. Very few. And I, I echo the comments that Rick and, and Joe have made. Uh, you, you hear those that uh, say that they've had all these telephone calls, and uh, it do, just does not happen. Mm -hmm. uh, if, um, you know, if people are interested in getting something done, for the most part, they know which department to call. They can call the electric department, the water department, street department. Uh, on their own without going through a city councilman or, or going through the mayor. Mm -hmm. Or when I do receive a call, just like these gentlemen do, uh, you just redirect them uh, to the proper department, and mm -hmm. uh, in most instances, it's taken care of. And those are the pros who do the day-to-day -day work, and they yes. know what's going uh, on. And, and that's right. exactly right, and they do a good job. You know, mm -hmm. everybody else has, has uh, things going on in their lives. These mm -hmm. folks are employed by the city uh, to do their job, and they do it very well. Mayor Stan Worth, Council Members Joe Billsbach and Rick Claybaugh with us today on Ask the Mayor. And we'll have more coming up in just a moment. Back on Ask the Mayor, it's 843. Mayor Stan Worth with us and uh, Council Members Joe Billsbach, who uh, represents the 4th uh, Ward, and Rick Claybaugh, the 2nd Ward. Both will be going off the uh, uh, council here in the early part of December, as will the mayor, as a new mayor has been elected, uh, Bob Morgan. Uh, did want to ask uh, both Joe and Rick about, uh, you know, we've gone through an election now. You have uh, uh, Mike McLean is uh, one re-election, uh, Dwayne Rue unopposed for your seat, Joe. Uh, and then also uh, we have Terry Doyle and we have uh, David Eskrit, gosh. He's blanking out there for a second. but uh, Well, you were up late too. Yeah, right? he's, he's going he's <laughs> to let me know about that one too, I'll bet. But, uh, overall, as council members, what did you think of the overall strength of the people that have been elected and will take over in uh, December? Joe, maybe start with you. Well, I, I guess I wish it, there would have been more people running uh, mm -hmm. for my position. Just I, I think it's always healthy to have yeah. uh, a strong election. Um, I don't know that much about Dwayne. Um, I think it's going to be a learning curve for him to work with the council. Um, that's the number one thing, and not just to go in with an agenda that mm -hmm. uh, that you've been. I, I know he has a lot of people that, that talk to him and mm -hmm. voice their opinion, so I hope he does does want to work with the rest of the city council members. So Consensus building is kind of important, isn't yes. it? Because if you can't, if you're constantly on the short side of a vote, you, it's hard to get things done. Exactly. Yeah. Rick, what do you think about the overall strength of the people that have been elected and will take over, I think, December 6th, I believe it is. 5th, isn't it? 5th? Yeah. Okay. December 5th, yes. I thought they were all good, good candidates. Um, you know, like Joe said, I don't know Dwayne very well, but he's been at all of our mm -hmm. council meetings yeah, now has, for a, a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you have, uh, you know, Dave Eskra, who uh, was chairman of the Board of Public Works and knows, you know, what's what's going on, some of the things that have been going on, and uh, and has had a lot of leadership roles in in uh, Beatrice. I think he'll be wonderful. Then you then you. You know, you, you have Mike McLean back as president and everything. That's a really good head start right Mike there. And, and then you have mm -hmm. a, a, a Terry Doyle, who was, uh, you know, past city administrator 30 years ago or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, but, but you know, Terry knows how, to, how it all works and uh, uh, just a lot bigger budget now than what, when he was around <laughs> there. So I, I think that um, it will be quite an asset um, to the council to have uh, people like that 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 got elected. Mayor, what'd you think of the overall cast of new characters coming I was, in? I was pleased with it. Uh, I made no secret about it that I uh, endorsed Bob Morgan for the mm -hmm. position of mayor just because of his uh, history and abilities uh, within the community, working with Southeast Community College and uh, working with their building program out there and managing uh, a, a large number of people on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, the fact that Dave Eskrip who is currently chairman of the, uh, the uh, Board of Public Works, who will be replaced uh, by uh, the incoming mayor, mm -hmm. and uh, Terry Doyle. Uh, I think uh, those two individuals uh, are going to bring a lot of knowledge and a lot of um, uh, positive impact to the community as, uh, as we move forward. 
you know, there's always carryover of projects that are in progress. You might be halfway through getting True. something accomplished or maybe close to getting it finished. But when you get a new body elected like this or new members, there might be some things that nobody's even thought of before that all of a sudden become initiatives. And that's not right or wrong. That's just people have different opinions about right. what the community needs. No, exactly. You know, um, in my term, uh, when it ends December 5th, there's a lot of things that are left undone. They're in the process. But you're always going to have that. Uh, you're, you're never going to be completely finished. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I am very positive that what we have in the works today and some of the things that we've got on the table and the drawing board are going to reach fruition. Okay. Uh, Joe, I, I want to <clears throat> ask both you and Rick this question. When you look back over the time that you've served, is there one thing that maybe was out there as a possibility, a project, a you know, an emphasis, whatever it might be, that you kind of wish more might have been done on, but just for whatever reason, just didn't get to that point. Whether that's economic development, recreation, a particular project, uh, does anything come to mind at all, Joe? Um, one of the things that we've talked about ever since I've been on here is um, getting a, a trail going out to the homestead, connecting the homestead to the to the city via a trail of some sort. And so we've started that process of looking that direction and um, with the government looking through funds. And uh, I don't know, there's a lot of stuff in the downtown. Uh, I think the downtown has been great. Uh, Main Street, a lot of the economic development we've done with that. But, you know, there can always be more. I was hoping more sidewalks would be repaired and... Um, not, nothing really sticks out mm -hmm. big. I mean, it, there's always something that comes along. So, Rick, anything for you? You look back on, uh, you'd like to have maybe a do-over or say, hey, I wish this would have gotten done and it didn't quite reach that point? Well, um, it, it, it really um, is discouraging when we have to tear down buildings. Mm -hmm. And, and um, you know, that, uh, that, that is really difficult to spend money <laughs> Uh, that way, uh, we have so many other places to spend money. But I, I, the thing that I wish that the, the new council will maybe uh, address is that when we, uh, we were really worked hard on an adjoining building, vacant building ordinance, mm -hmm. and uh, at the last minute they kind of watered it down a little bit. Um, I, I hope they address that so so that it puts a little bit more teeth into it and mm -hmm. some of these some of these people just don't have the pride of ownership that I that um, they need to have mm -hmm. and and you hate to uh, push them too far but it's really disconcerting to spend as much money as we have on a couple buildings here mm -hmm. in the last eight years or yeah. something like that so yeah. I, I hope that the council will revisit that mm -hmm. and um, see what they can do so that we can identify the buildings that are really having some problems mm -hmm. and um, and get it taken care of before they're beyond repair. You know, one flip side of that, too, is the city's use of downtown redevelopment grants where you combine private investment with public money, mm -hmm. which has kind of worked out pretty nice. You've seen some business uh, businesses that have improved their look, made needed improvements that maybe maybe wouldn't have occurred without that help. Yeah, that is that is really you know, the uh, downtown revitalization grants have really been good. I can't remember how many million dollars mm -hmm. uh, uh, the last two that uh, were spent, but uh, it really gives the, some of those building owners uh, impetus to fix up their buildings where they might have, they might not have before. Yeah. And then the the sidewalk program that was that's been very successful, um, and now they're focusing on second story. Mm -hmm. um, so. You know, during this next process, so hopefully that'll that'll uh, we'll make some inroads in mm -hmm. in uh, getting some more buildings more viable for downtown. Then, um, one question before we take another break here, Rick. Last time with a public uh, running for public office, or you entertain thoughts that you might sit out for a while and then come back or something. Well, I I ran for airport authority when I when I <laughs> when I and now it's an advisory. First, <laughs> yeah, when I when I first uh, uh, signed up, I. I uh, you know, thought it was going to be uh, uh, monthly meetings, and and uh, and then as uh, then as time went on, it became an advisory board. But mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I would ever run for any other okay. thing. I just I just have a uh, uh, interest out the airport, and and um, 
Uh, we have a new airport manager now, and a um, uh, great guy. Diana did a wonderful job for 30 years. Mm-hmm. Um, but that airport is quite an asset to our community and, and, uh, and uh, very good for economic development. It's well-respected in the state. Joe, Joe, now that you had a taste of elected office, would you ever think of running again sometime down the road? Or well, I I had said too that uh, maybe down the road I would. I I thought it'd be good to get off and let new blood come in to the seat and um, maybe look at it again in two years or four years or whatever. So, just see how it goes. Mayor, what about you? What about it? <laughs> <laughs> thought I'd get that kind of response. Never say never. Every, yeah. Never say never. Yeah. If, if the opportunity arises and it looks attractive, there's a possibility. There then. could be. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll leave it at that and go to break. <laughs> pretty, yeah. pretty obscure, <laughs> isn't it? <Yeah. laughs> well, it's an interesting question because some people say, hey, that's it. Once I've been in it, I'm done. Yeah. Others say, oh, it might be interesting down the road. So, back, uh, back to wrap up Ask the Mayor in just a moment with Mayor... Stan Worth, uh, Rick Claybaugh, and Joe Bilsbach, council members leaving service in early December. Back to, to wrap up Ask the Mayor today with Mayor Stan Worth and city council members Joe Bilsbach and uh, Rick Claybaugh. Uh, trying to think of what I was going to ask you guys here. That's right. I have a question. Oh, I'm helping you out, Doug. Okay, I know well, you stayed up you. late the other night. <laughs> you know, I tell you what, I must be reaching close to retirement. I'm starting to forget <laughs> things or whatever here, but... Uh, Call our question about why don't you enforce the truck routes? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the truck route is uh, something that we would like people to follow, but mm-hmm. it is a suggestion more than an absolute requirement. If you have a U.S. highway, uh, Highway 77, Highway 136, that intersects our community, uh, you cannot uh, actually let uh, tell them that they have to follow the truck route. Mm-hmm. Uh, we certainly hope that they would, simply because it... Uh, 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 at Sixth and Court, when you have a, a, a oversized load or something like that, it makes it really difficult, and you have to get the police department involved to direct traffic. And sometimes our uh, traffic signs uh, fall fall victim to some of those trucks that are trying to uh, make a sharp turn. But again, it's a, it's a suggestion, and enforcement is is pretty difficult. Okay. Did want to ask you, Mayor, about uh, something that came up on Monday night. We talked about it before, I think, on our prior program. It came up during the public forum section of the council meeting. You came in for some criticism about uh, the J.C. Penney mm-hmm. project and the, the the path you're taking as far as the company has taken that over, right. and also doing roof work for the city. Right. Uh, there were allegations that there were legal violations in terms of misdemeanor violations of the law. Since it was public forum section, you can't respond, so you sit right. there and listen to it right. but any you any can comments? respond now if you want uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah so um again like you said in the public forum we cannot respond mm-hmm. and you know it has become uh, a, a bit of a um, venue so to speak for people to come up and criticize the city council without any kind of response from us um they are allegations, and that's all they are, is allegations, indicating that we violated state law, that we violated uh, city ordinances, and we did not violate state law, nor did we violate um, city ordinances. As far as the bidding process is concerned, we are allowed under state statute to uh, not necessarily bid every project out. And in this instance, We chose the best deal, and the council saw this as a uh, best business decision that could be made. The folks that actually are in the building uh, doing the demo work, and by the way, the asbestos is still in the building. It's not outside of the building or floating around anywhere. But um, I kind of lost my train of thought here. But... um, uh, what was I saying? You too. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's rubbing off on you. Yeah. It must be. It must be. Yeah. Well, uh, the point is, is that uh, the folks that uh, are bu- buying the building from the city want nothing from the city uh, other than a place to occupy uh, some additional uh, uh, business space. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a offer out there. Uh, that they, uh, the building be given to uh, the individual and uh, utilizing $200,000 worth of uh, uh, grant money, mm-hmm. uh, non-pay- non-repayable grant money, tax increment financing, 
uh, sidewalk repair. So you weigh the two options of somebody wanting a lot versus somebody that wants nothing. And I think the council, uh, in their infinite wisdom, made the best decision. All right. Well, as we uh, wrap up today, uh, one of the neat things about uh, Monday night, every once in a while you get to kind of go through, usually toward the front of the council meeting, little ceremonies uh, of things taking place in the city. And one was the elevation of Ethan, Hor- uh, Ethan, Ethan Jordan mm-hmm. to uh, sergeant of the police department. Mm-hmm. And I want to ask council members here, too, that one thing I've noticed about the officers in the department, not only under Bruce Lang, but under John Hickman now, too, is that you know, we think of them just in the uniform and everything, but they are really community involved, and I know Ethan has been too. Uh, Rick, that's kind of a neat thing to. It see really is. Yeah. Um, uh, our policemen and our firemen are really active in the community. They mm-hmm. they yeah. do tons of things. Um, uh, it's it's uh, kind of amazing what Chief Lang, all the different things that he did in the community. Mm-hmm. That I'm sure that. Um, uh, John Hickman will do the same thing too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Joe, and then police just recently, I guess during the. The Halloween event downtown, right outside your business, they were out there meeting with kids and things like that. So yeah. it kind of goes beyond just what they do on the day to day basis. Yeah, it is. So. They they really are out there to meet the community and work with them, and yeah, it's it's great to see. I think Ethan will do a great job. Mm-hmm. So good. Well, we'd like to thank both Rick and Joe for coming in today. Best wishes with whatever you do from this point on, and don't rule out running again. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Doug. Thanks. Thanks. Doug. Thanks, Stan, Appreciate for coming it. in again. Thank Appreciate you, it.